Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and we are back with a brand new episode of House Hunting 101. It's a new series where I essentially take you through looking for new properties and the true cost of renovations. If you're looking to upgrade your home or buy new property, or you're simply looking for fresh new ideas to update data features in your space, this video is for you. The first episode featured homes all around Orange County, which is currently where I live. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I recently visited my family in Houston, Texas. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and raised for the first part of my childhood in Houston. So I still have a ton of family in Texas. While I'm not looking to purchase a home in Texas myself, I have a lot of friends that have actually moved from Southern California to Texas just because they wanted more land. You know, they wanted more land, they wanted a more quiet life, a more simple life. They didn't want these sky high California home rates and judging by the looks of what you can get, I mean, you are getting so much bang for your buck. So let's go through a few of my favorites and talk to you about the pros and cons of each. This first home in Houston is listed for $255,000 at just a little bit over 2,500 square feet, which is incredible. I mean, you literally can't even get an apartment for 1,200 square feet in Southern California for this price, but you're getting almost this gigantic mansion. And the thing that I love about this space is clearly the curb appeal. I mean, it's such a beautiful brick lined home and you'll see that you get so much land with this property. If you don't love brick, clearly you don't want to choose a completely brick facade house. Of course, you can paint brick. This is a professional job that needs to be done by professional painters. And I think just because of the tone on tone with the brick and the shutters, just amplifying one over the other with a little bit of contrast is going to really bring this home to life. Upon entering into the space, it looks like you're met with this open air room. It feels like the previous owners turned this into an office and while there is a wall of built-in cabinetry, it doesn't look like it's actually built in and mounted to the walls. It actually looks like it was a freestanding piece that the previous owners added, which is great because if you don't want built-in cabinetry, you can easily remove this or repaint it. So you always want to look for whether or not a built-in is stuck on the walls or if it looks like it's a freestanding piece that's just kind of pushed up against the walls. I love the idea of turning a formal dining room into a game area. I mean, clearly not everyone loves ping pong, but for this family, instead of putting a formal dining table into the space, maybe they're not that formal. You know, it seems like they're playful and they spend most of their time having game nights with the family. And of course, a ping pong table that further even converts to a dining table would be such a cool and like unique move for this space. Again, we're looking for architectural details that you either love or you hate. I mean, the house has a little bit of a traditional vibe to it. You can tell by the crown molding, the crystal chandeliers, and some of the wooden spindles on the balusters of the stairwell. So if those are key items that you're not looking to update or change out, maybe you just want a fresh coat of paint, that is going to be the most cost-effective way for you to refinish the look. Okay, so let's talk about this family room. This family room looks like it's adjacent to the kitchen. I love the ceiling beams even if it's not structural I think it's a really cool feature to kind of highlight architectural ceiling work that you may or may not love with the crown molding being in a different color I mean I would possibly even paint these beams to match the crown or have the crown and walls be the same color but here's an example of a built-in bookcase you can see on the furthest portion of the wall you have this brick fireplace with a wood mantle this wood mantle could easily be removed for you to you know, give it more of like a modern update. You can update the brick with a marble hearth and a wood mantle, just something a little bit more streamlined and modern and a little less bulky. So these built-in cabinets are recessed and they're clearly built into the niche of this wall. If you decide that this look is a little bit too traditional for you, maybe you wanna update it with paint. I mean, that's probably the easiest and cheapest thing that you could do, but you also could remove the entire bookshelf itself and maybe line the bottom half with closed cabinetry and the upper half with open shelving. So depending on the look that you like and the storage that you need, there are so many ways to kind of update this family room space. 
Let's talk about the furniture and its placement. You know that it's a common design mistake to place your television directly above the fireplace. Clearly in this room, the television can't even fit over the fireplace. I mean, the space is too small. So the previous homeowners actually had the television placed in the right area. It's on a console on the largest solid wall, which is perfect so that you could face your largest sofa against the TV and optimize the view of both the fireplace and the television. So that was actually a really smart move. Directly across from the family room, you'll see a snack area and this kitchen that's almost divided by this pony wall. A pony wall is essentially a half wall. I'm assuming that they divided the space because there's probably a peninsula or base cabinets that wraps on the other side of this pony wall. If you wanted to open up the kitchen and demolish this pony wall, there are a few things that you need to consider. If you demo the pony wall, you're also demolishing that row of base cabinets that you might need for storage. So that's number one. You're going to be removing a lot of base cabinets and in that case, you might even be remodeling the entire kitchen as a result since the base cabinets are connected to the countertop above it. Another thing you wanna look out for is the flooring. How is the flooring going to transition between this open family room space and your new open kitchen? Clearly, you can see that this room has been divided. There's a flooring transition between two different types of tile, one that looks like it's about 18 by 18 inches and the one in the kitchen that looks like it's 12 by 12. So once you demolish this pony wall, you're going to have to lay out a brand new flooring so that there is no transition between both spaces. But a big plus of having an open concept space is that you can see your entire family. You might want to have a huge old island in the middle versus this kind of dinky little butcher block. Think about how you love to use the space. Think about how your family uses the space and then you could redesign the space accordingly. Off from the main kitchen, you'll see that there's a little breakfast room. This might be one of the reasons why they converted that formal dining room into a large game room for a ping pong table because they already have another breakfast area. The room is pretty sizable. It gets a lot of natural light. So I actually like that move. You know, you don't have to call an office an office, a bedroom a bedroom. Clearly a formal dining room could also be a play area for the kids. We're gonna move through this home pretty quickly. I just kind of wanted to show you the key things to look out for so that we could kind of move on to the rest of the properties. So what you're essentially looking for is a lot of open expansive space. You're looking for a lot of great natural light. You're looking for a lot of cosmetic finishes that you can update without having to dive into all those structural changes. You look at this purple room and you're kind of thinking, oh my gosh, I would never move into a purple room. But clearly paint is so easy to change out. It's easily the least expensive update that you're going to be making in this space. So don't be afraid of ugly paint color. Finally ending with the primary bedroom and the primary ensuite. You'll see that the primary ensuite, I mean, this is very old school traditional. You've got an open ensuite bathroom, which means there's no doors, but not only is there no doors, there's also these balusters that kind of separate the space. Not only do you get a peekaboo into the bathroom, you also have these pony walls instead of like a large solid wall that you could easily just add a door or a barn door to it. So this is a little bit more work if you want to have this covered up. We're talking builder grade everything at this point. I mean, the bathroom is a little horrendous. I actually feel as though they probably started a remodel and kind of bailed out halfway through. I mean, you could see it with the crown molding. There's a huge section that has been removed. The electrical boxes are out. So it almost looks as though they refinished this entire wall. They might have had plumbing issues. They might have had structural issues. So know what to look out for when you're going through these images online. Next, we have this home that's just under 3,000 square feet and it's listed almost at 350,000. It's a two-story home with a white brick facade. So we're talking about brick again. Brick is really popular in Texas because you need something sturdy to withstand all of the elements. In contrast to the previous home, which was just exposed natural brick, this is brick that's been painted over with white. So of course you can paint brick, but you're going to get this type of effect. I love the arch detailing at the entry. I think it's just a really cool feature so this porch doesn't feel so claustrophobic and suffocating. It just feels light and open and airy. Upon entering into the home, you're met with this raised platform landing. The landing has Mexican Saltillo tile, which if you love Saltillo tile, which is a terracotta tile, you'll kind of love this look. But of course, if you don't, be prepared to rip out this tile and replace it with something that you love. 
The railing is very dated. I mean, you know, you've got this kind of decorative metal scrim going on and it doesn't do anything to add character to the space. To me, it'd be one of the first things that you rip out. But remember, you want to look at how the railing is attached to the walls or the floors. Let's say you love that terracotta tile. The minute that you replace or update the railing, you'll see that the railing has been screwed into the tile. So you might even have to replace key pieces in that tile as a result. You've got that same metal railing that's climbing on the stairs. I mean, you also have this very dated decorative skirt as well. So even though these elements are cosmetic, they will still add to your renovation costs. I mean, I'm only a couple of pictures in and I already see three types of flooring in the space, which there's nothing wrong with it. It's just think about flooring choices. If you want one consistent flooring throughout the space, you also want to think about the flooring that you love the best and then maybe just swap out the other two and update it so that it carries along that same wood finish that you want to carry from the stairs into the family room. So I actually really love the layout of the space. I mean, I think it has really cool features. The ceiling has almost this type of panel molding that's attached to it. There's no recess, there's no tray, there's no soffit. They kind of just added this panel molding detail as like a decorative finish. To me, I mean, I don't love the different mishmash of colors. You know, the wall color is one color, the ceiling has a border, and then the inset is another color. That's a little busy to me. When you have panel molding, I think it's really beautiful when you just paint that surface one solid color and that will really just help the paneling come alive. Of course the drapery panels are way too short here. They don't even kiss the floor so you always want to make sure that your drapery or panels or curtains kind of sweep the floor for that modern look. I love that this home has this really huge entertainment area. I mean, this seems to probably be the family room that the family enjoys the most, whereas the room that's right off the entry is like a formal living. A missed opportunity here, which is a very common design mistake, is having furniture that's pushed all up against the walls. I mean, you're probably thinking the kitchen's right there. I want people to be able to walk through, but you know what? They don't need six or seven feet to pass through from one area to the next. So give your room a little bit of life, a little bit more conversational kind of seating group and push the sofas and the accent chairs and the love seat into the space more and let the walls breathe. What you're going to do is actually make this room look even larger and you're going to create strategic zones so you tell people how to use the space. So again, another key feature of this open expansive family room is a built-in. Whether or not this built-in is actually your style, you have to think about the investment and the renovation cost to remove it or update it. Of course, if you remove it, you're gonna have this huge hole in your wall, so you're going to have to fill that with something. Whether or not it's floor to ceiling cabinetry, I mean, you could turn this into kind of like a snack area and do base cabinets on the bottom with a countertop or some surface space. You can even hide a little beverage cooler in there, which could be cool. In a situation like this, when the fireplace is a star, you really can place a television on a console beside the fireplace like the previous homeowners did here. But there was a huge miss here. They placed the television on an open console, so you see all these cables and wires hanging. I mean, that's just not a good look. So clearly you wanna have a really streamlined look. So I would say either place a television on a console that's covered, it has, bottom drawers, bottom cabinets, just something so you can conceal all those wiring and your media equipment. And of course, size. Size matters. I mean, you want a console that is larger than the width of the television. I mean, a good rule of thumb is I like the television to be around the three quarter size of the console. Like it takes up at least 75% of the width of the console. This helps the television to feel a little bit more anchored into the space and not like it's just a floating black box. Here's a little integrated bar area that was very popular in 90s new builds. You kind of have this little nook that you created a bar out of. And if you have young children, if you don't entertain a whole lot, I mean, what are you gonna do with a bar? You could do a few things. I mean, you could turn this into a larger pantry. Of course, if you did that, you would have to close off the walls and create an entry door. You could think about creating really strategic storage nooks depending on your family's needs. Maybe instead of additional storage you want to expand the powder room or you want to turn that powder room into a three-quarter bath where you have a standing shower or maybe even small soaking tub and a larger bathroom space 
So you want to think about real estate. I mean, you want to utilize every single square inch of your space and make sure that everything works for you and your family. Again, the bathrooms here, there's a lot of cosmetic changes. I mean, if you love granite, if you don't love granite, you're really just looking at cosmetic upgrades so that it fits your style and aesthetic. Space is great. I mean, you go into the bedrooms and it's really just minor changes. It's just paint updates, paint refreshes. Maybe you wanna swap out the carpet. Carpet is the easiest and cheapest way for you to update flooring, especially if you already have carpet in place because there's already carpet pads underneath. There might be plywood underneath. In that case, you would only have to switch out the carpet pads and the actual carpet yourself. And that's very, very inexpensive to do. I mean, moving on to the backyard, I mean, there's just so much land here with a beautiful pool. It's completely landscaped. I cannot believe that you could get this for $350,000. We can't even talk about the comps here in California. I mean, this home in Orange County would easily, easily go for at least 1.25 mil. Even more, I mean, the house is pretty updated. There's just very few cosmetic changes, but structurally, everything is there. So you wanna think about that when you're looking for a new home. We are ending with this 2,200 square foot like compound for $450,000. Even though it's less square footage, it's actually a little bit more land and it's going for $100,000 more than the previous home. I love this. I love that it's private. It has a private driveway. You kind of enter through a very own private gate and beyond the brick walls. So to me, it just feels like a compound. You know, it feels very private. It feels very secure and I love that. Coming onto the entry, here are those Saltillo floors again. I mean, this Mexican tile is not cheap. I mean, it costs between four to six dollars to install and for the materials. So if you're gonna rip out this tile, you wanna think about what are you gonna replace it with? And if you're going to run that flooring throughout the entire home so that there's no transitions. Coming into the family room, I love this vaulted ceiling. I mean, I think it makes the space feel so much more open and airy, especially in a one-story home. Notice the popcorn ceiling. I mean, popcorn ceiling clearly is this texture that they used to spray on so that your ceilings look a little bit fancier, but clearly it's so, so dated. And popcorn ceiling, it's not expensive to professionally remove. It's between one and $2 a square foot. Just know that if you're going to DIY it yourself, it's very labor intensive. It's not like you can't do it, but just be prepared for all of the prep work and all of the actual scraping. I mean, it's just a lot of work. Here we have built-ins again, and we've got this brick fireplace. The difference between this brick fireplace and the other fireplaces is that there's no mantle. I think this is a really easy update using the structural framing of this brick fireplace. I mean, it's just a huge rectangular box. So whether or not you wanna paint the brick, leave it as is, or put another material right on it, you actually don't have to demolish the brick. You could always just plaster right over it or put up a stone facade. So just think about the finish that you like and whether or not you have to demo the existing finish to apply the new ones on. I love that the home already has recessed lighting. I mean, the recessed lights are a great way to have general lighting in the space and it's really economical and a good rule of thumb for you to switch out incandescent lights to energy efficient LEDs. So that's a very easy move using the existing cans that they already have. Talking about the space planning of this room, it was such a smart move for the previous homeowners to section and divide this room up into different seating groups. I love that they have a large sofa facing the main focal point, which is the fireplace, and accent chairs facing that main sofa. This is the perfect way to create an intimate conversational seating group. Everyone in the space can look at each other, talk to one another, and engage with one another. On the opposite side of this intimate seating group, they've also placed a pair of accent chairs. I mean, this pair of accent chairs could pretty much face anything. It could face a television, it could face a bar, it could be an area where you know, you're know you just having tea or coffee. So it's a good idea to break the room up into smaller groups depending on your needs. The formal dining room has a lot of great light. I mean, this blue wall color, of course, could easily be painted. You also wanna key into all the lighting in the space. Because there's already a pendant fixture here that's fixated right over the dining table, that's very easy for you to swap out since the J box is already there. Moving on to the kitchen. The kitchen is going to be the biggest investment that you make into your home. Whether or not you're updating appliances, updating the finishes, you wanna make sure that the layout of the kitchen is optimized so that you have a great working triangle, you know, you can cook, you can plan, you can prep, you can entertain, and do all those things that you love to do in a kitchen. 
Judging by the finishes, it looks like this tile was meant to match the saltillo flooring in the entry. The saltillo flooring in the entry you can tell was original or it's at least a terracotta tile, whereas this tile looks like it's porcelain made to look like terracotta. So you don't get that kind of rich depth that you get with the saltillo. So I would say in this situation, you might want to update the flooring. So of course you'd have to demo all of this tile out and look for something that coordinates with the tile on the countertops or even the backsplash on the walls. If the cabinet boxes are in really good condition, you might want to keep the essential layout of the cabinets and maybe just update the cabinet faces which means you can remove all the doors on the cabinets. You can custom make brand new doors and use the existing boxes. As I take you through from room to room, I'm one of the key things that I notice in all of the rooms is that there's only one single source of light fixture. And that location might not be ideal to what you want. So if you wanted to kind of update this space and make it more like the entertainment family room, then you'll want to add in recessed LED lighting. Recess LED lights is actually pretty inexpensive. It usually costs between $100 to $150 per unit. So if you're adding four units in a room, which is pretty sizable for a space, then you're looking just to invest at least $400 to $600, which is not a lot. And always think about those built-ins, whether or not those built-ins are recessed into the walls or whether or not those built-ins are affixed right on the walls. So you know whether or not it's a structural change or a cosmetic change that you need to invest in. This particular home is actually in a gated community. So not only do you have a gated community and you have HOAs and you might have mellow roofs, you also have access to tennis courts, swimming pools that you don't have to maintain and upkeep yourself. So you also wanna think about that addition on top of what you're paying for the home's mortgage. That's it for this house hunting episode in Houston, Texas. I mean, what did you think? Are the prices comparable to where you live? Are you getting more land? Are you getting more home? I mean, to me, you're getting so much more in Houston than you ever would in Southern California. But a huge reason why my family moved here to Southern California is number one, the weather. I mean, you've got this perfect weather year round, but really we all pay the price to live where we live. So you wanna think about that as you're looking for homes or if you're looking to relocate. Where should the next episode take place? Let me know in the comments below where you're from, how I can access those properties online, and let me know what you're looking for when you're investing in a new home or you're looking to update key features in your own space. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you share this series, House Hunting 101, with anyone you know who's looking to buy a new property. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.